Welcome to another screencast by Falcon PHP. Today we're going to be introducing the Zephyr GIT or just in time compiler. I've set up my web server to work, and as you can see, it says it works. Uh, let me open my editor, and I've set up a, a test folder, and now I'm going to create a test.php file just to load it up. Uh, let me just make sure that uh, PHP is running and Zephyr is loaded. So uh, I put PHP info there. So let me just type test here, test.php. And it loads, as you can see, PHP info. And let me find Zephyr. There you go. So Zephyr is 0 .0 0.0.1. So all I need to do now is see how the GIT compiler works. So I'm going to create a math.zep file, <clears throat> a new Zephyr file. And in this file, let me create a, a math class. Uh, it's just a simple class, doesn't have anything right now. So let me see if that works. So I'll require the math.zep file <laughs> and uh, load it up. Nothing happens, no errors, but I'm not 100% sure that it works. So let me var dump uh, whether the class math exists. And I should be able to see true here. There you go. The, the class exists. So let me get more functionality here. Let me just put sum as a public variable and other again. So this one needs to change a little bit. Let me instantiate a new math class. And then var dump, oops, var dump this, the M. So load it up on my browser, and there you go. The object is there. So now let me take that out and enhance my class a little bit by creating a new function called hello. We like our classes, we like them to be, uh, to have uh, very polite functions. So let me echo hello there. And then go back to my test.php and then just issue m hello. And then just load it up on the browser. There you go, hello. All this is happening in runtime. I haven't compiled any extension whatsoever. So, in tra traditionally, the math.zeb would be compiled, but now I'm not doing anything because everything is done in the background. So I've changed again, as you see, my my uh, function, and it accepted a new variable. Now I'm gonna change it again to make it uh, calculate the pi. So let me just do this by return a new long. So let me just remove this and put var dump m pi. As you see, I didn't put anything in here. And there you go, my exception has been thrown because it, ac it accepts a variable. So the variable is on 120, make this 120 rather. And there you go. Um, more a little bit here. Let me just put a long, let me create a while loop <coughs> so we can see more data being printed on screen. Let me put a br here and let me increment the i. <laughs> and let me load it up. There you go. 120 items. Let me just change this to. Let me make that 10, and there you go, it prints out again. So let me put more functionality into my function here. Uh, so I'll put pi equals 4, top equals 4, and bottom equals 3. And make sure that this returns a double. And here's where I'm going to put the functionality for calculating the pi. I need a boolean variable here, whether we're going to have to subtract or not. 
So let pi equals pi plus top divided by bottom times minus 1. And then let's make the minus equals false. Otherwise, we need the same thing, but minus will become true. And we have to get rid of the minus 1 there. And then the bottom has to be bottom plus 2. And then we need to return the calculated pi variable. So now this is going to return um, a float double, as you can see. So let me increase the accuracy. There you go. You can see the 3.15. Let's put more zeros. It becomes a, a lot more accurate and so on and so forth. So you're, you're seeing here the power of the GIT compiler and uh, this is coming in Falcon 2.0. Thank you for watching.